Brothers and sisters, we warmly welcome you and thank you for joining the Tobago Methodist Circuit's worship service. We are coming to you today from our chapel located in Scarborough, and we extend a special greeting to the members of our 10 congregations, starting with the Bethel Congregation in Charlottesville. Then we have the Ebenezer Congregation in Roxborough, Olivet Congregation in Lansfamy, the Castara and Goodwood Congregations, Mount St. George and Mason Hall Congregations, Franklin Congregation in Lake Otto, the Scarborough Congregation and Canaan Bonacord Congregation in Canaan. Our worship theme on this Easter Sunday is the resurrection of Jesus and the subject of the sermon is from despair to joy. We will also observe the sacrament of Holy Communion. Today's service will be led by Reverend Eve Lord and the sermon preached by our Superintendent Minister, Reverend Philbert Delaney. Please join us. Greetings to all. Today again we worship in our homes, among our households, as if we are locked away. It also reminds me of Jesus' disciples after he was crucified and buried. His disciples too were locked in a room away from everyone else. And it was in that place that they received the news that Jesus was risen. Today, we worship that resurrected Christ in our homes, with our families, in the presence of God. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. He is a risen. Let us sing now verses 1 and 2 of the hymn 373. Jesus stand among us in thy risen power. Jesus stand among us. wonderful hymn that is numbered 127 in our voices in praise. Low in the grave he lay, Jesus my Savior, waiting the coming day, Jesus my Lord. Thank you. 
let us continue in prayer. We adore you, O God, because there is none like you. We adore you because indeed you are just God all by yourself. You are an offering to us through Jesus Christ you have given. We give you praise to the O God. We acknowledge you to be our Lord and Savior. We acknowledge you to be King of Kings. We acknowledge you to be the rising sun. We acknowledge you indeed to be God. God all by yourself. We give you praise and glory and honor. We magnify your name. And today, O oh God, we know that all these things that we have, you have given to us. But we come at this time humbly asking you to forgive us. Forgive us because we have taken those things for granted. Forgive us that we did not recognize our brothers and our sisters. Forgive us that we have hoarded all that we have and did not share. Like the good Samaritan did, O oh God. Forgive us, O oh God, that we have abused and, and misused all that you have given. Today, O oh God, we ask you to forgive us. We ask you to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We ask you, dear God, that you will take away our fleshy desires and give us a desire for more of you. Dear God, we know that you are indeed a forgiving father. And when we confess our sins to you, you will take them away from us and cast them into the sea of forgetfulness. We thank you for being our forgiving Father. And we can hear you echoing our names in the air. My son, my daughter, come. Your sins are forgiven. And we can declare amen. Thanks be to God. We thank you for Jesus Christ that went to Calvary's cross for our sins. We thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you that today we serve that resurrected Christ. We thank you for your covering. We thank you for providing for us. Indeed, our hearts and our souls are blessed. Oh Lord, we give you thanks. We thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son and Holy Spirit, for all that you have done. Indeed, we say thank you, Lord. The gospel reading comes to us from St. John chapter 20, reading verses 1 through to 18. And it reads, Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lined with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head 
and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you had carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to his disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of Christ. Okay, so children, today I'm sharing with you the story about Jesus' resurrection, which means that he's alive. He is not dead. He died for all of us, and now he's alive. So, as the passage says to us, that Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. She went to look for Jesus. But when Mary got there, surprisingly, the tomb was open. Before, the tomb was closed with this big stone against the door so no one could get in and two guards were there so that they would arrest anyone who comes to take the body away. But when Mary got there, the tomb was open. And for Mary, it was, be, it was very surprising that the tomb was open. The stone was rolled away, and nobody was inside. For sure, it would have been a real sad time for Mary. Mary did not understand what was happening, so she ran back to her friends and tell them, someone has taken his body. So all of them gathered together now and on their way to the tomb recognized that indeed all they saw was the wrappings. The wrappings that they put around his head and his feet and all that, they were all gone. And then while they were there and Mary was crying and, and wondering what they did with my Jesus, she saw someone. And the person's asking, why are you crying? And she told them that she's crying because someone has taken the body of Jesus. Eventually, Mary found out that it was Jesus was talking to her. So when Jesus called her by name, she was so happy. She said, Rabbi! What a joy it was for Mary. That Jesus was not dead, he is alive. So today, my dear boys and girls, Jesus is alive. He is alive because he loves you and he loves me. So that means that if Jesus loves all of us, that we should always praise him. And I want you to sing this song with me. Praise him, praise him, all you little children. Let your parents help you to find the number. It is 478 in the Voices in Praise. And we will sing it to the honor and glory for the Christ who loves us all the time.
next voice you will hear is that of the Superintendent Minister, Reverend Philbert Delaney, with the sermon. I join in greeting you, my beloved brothers and sisters, across Trinidad and Tobago, the wider Caribbean, and the world. Happy Easter on behalf of the Tobago Methodist Circuit Ministerial Staff, Reverend Janice Jack Watson, Reverend Elton Watson, Reverend Eve Lord, Reverend Janice Soy Delaney, and myself, along with our respective family members. Rejoice, for today is Easter, the glorious celebration of the resurrection of Jesus. Joanna Fox reminds us in her poem, without Easter, there will be no hope of heaven. Without the hope of heaven, there will be no repentance, no personal transformation, no attempt to follow biblical principles. Without Easter, the world will be in chaos and darkness. Jesus' death and resurrection mean we can be reborn to live better, to do better, to shine light into the shadows. Hallelujah. Happy, happy Easter. Let us pray. O almighty and ever-living and redeeming God, in the midst of our COVID-19 period of despair, we seek in this ark of worship to hear from you and to be ministered to by you. Quieten our anxiousness, guide our thoughts, and in this hour, O oh God, minister to us at our point of need. And so may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. I want to share with you against the subject of from despair to joy. And our focus verse comes from John chapter 20, verse 18. Mary Madeline went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what he had said to her. Pope John Paul II has provided us with a very apt quotation for these troublous times. He said, do not abandon yourselves to despair. We are the Easter people and hallelujah is our song. In a most interesting manner, the common lectionary gospel reading for this Easter 2020 comes from John chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. And indeed, it moves us from a state of despair to one of joy. The biblical character portrayed in that reading is Mary Madeline traveling apparently alone early that famous morning while it was still dark and arriving at the tomb site of Jesus. The unknown writer of John's gospel does not specifically tell us why Mary Madeline went to the tomb but what it says is that she was there and what she saw. This was very much unlike the other writers of the gospel, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. According to Matthew chapter 28 and verse 1, Mary Madeline and the other Mary went to see the tomb. There's a, very, there's a very large symmetry in Barbados. 
And whenever I have occasion to go there, I will stroll from grave to grave, recalling the lives of my loved ones who are buried there. In some cases, it may even cause me to shed a tear. Eventually, though, I will leave. So while tomb viewing can be meaningful, it is not fulfilling. According to Mark chapter 16, verse 1, and Luke chapter 24, verse 1, we are told of the women, including Mary Magdalene, buying and taking prepared spices to the tomb site. You see, it was the Jewish custom to anoint a dead body for burial. And since the intervening Sabbath after Jesus' crucifixion had prevented this from being done, the women sought at the earliest opportunity to honor Jesus in this manner. When one of my aunts died many years ago, my relative bought a brand new dress to bury her in. Yes, even in this day, we civilized people across the world in our varied cultures and rituals seek in a very deliberate way to honor our dead. I am moved at the views on television of the passionate cries of many persons across the world who because of COVID-19 are having loved ones buried hastily or even in places unknown to them. Yes, honoring the dead is meaningful, but not fulfilling. The question we need to ask ourselves, therefore, this morning is how can we move from despair to joy? And I want to invite you to reflect with me a little longer on John chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. One, seek Jesus resolutely. John's gospel puts the emphasis of the resurrection story on Mary's intent to see Jesus. Dead or alive, we may say. We will never know what was in the mind of Mary Madeline regarding which, that which she intended to do towards the dead, badly beaten, pierced side of the crucified Jesus. But alas, she remained resolute in seeking after him. If anything, my beloved, is worth pursuing at all, it is worth pursuing at least 10 times. I greatly admire and I'm motivated by the determination of Mary Madeline in seeking Jesus. According to Luke chapter 8 and verse 2, this woman was once possessed with seven demons, and after Jesus healed her, she became one of those who followed him and even assisted in providing for his knees and that of the other disciples. In addition to Jesus continually ministering to Mary Madeline, she would have seen him minister to many others in varied circumstances. At this point, her time of despair had come and she helplessly and in grief witnessed Jesus being brutally handled by his enemies as he was beaten and maligned, resulting in his crucifixion, death, and later 
his dead body being laid in a borrowed tomb. On that day, when she witnessed that horrible sight, she may have thought that all was lost. And the fact is that when we too have to witness horrible sights affecting us directly or even those around us in the community, we might begin to say that there's no hope, that all is lost. Yet the wonderful news is that on the Easter Sunday, Mary Madeline got up and she sought after Jesus. And according to John, apparently alone. Hallelujah. Something within her caused her to leave the state of despair and anguish and grief and to go after her Lord. Oh, what a marvelous example of encouragement to us in the midst of COVID-19. Even as we encounter the closed chapels, the stay-at-home instructions, the possible infection, and death that scares us. When Mary did not find Jesus in a logical place of the tomb site, she ran to the disciples and told them what had happened. Two of them came, examined and recognized for themselves that the body of Jesus was missing. And then scripture says, they went back home. You know, Mary remained at the tomb, seeking after Jesus, even in her tears. I want to tell you that I know that it is really, really hard when we are faced with dread situations of life and we reach out to others who just leave us there. I will always remember my encounter of a dread situation and as I reach out to someone who I thought was close to me, the person says, that is you. Thank God it's not me. And they left. Yes, life can throw at us such dread challenges. And sometimes we have to bear it alone. And that is why it is very important that in this COVID-19 situation and indeed in all the situations that are unhappy for us, terminal illnesses, grief, or any other adverse thing, we need to recognize that while you may be the victim today, I may be the victim tomorrow. And all of us need to be together to recognize that we are in this together. And we must be very careful how we treat each other in times of misfortune. Truthfully though, only Jesus, who is God himself, can move us out of despair. John Eldred reminds us, we need Jesus like we need oxygen, like we need water, like the branch needs the vine. So this is not merely a figure for devotions. He's the missing essence of your existence. Whether we know it or not, we are desperate for Jesus. My brother, my sister, on this Easter day, whatever you're going through, seek Jesus resolutely. Even if you don't understand what is happening, seek Jesus. Never, never give up, for he is our only hope. Secondly, commit to Jesus. In the midst of Mary Madeline seeking after Jesus, she encountered an empty tomb and a risen Jesus, for he appeared to her and called her by name. 
she connected to him. Rabboni. And they converse. I can imagine the joy that flooded her soul as she recognized him and even wanted to hold on to him. A story is told of two children playing in a nearby field. And in the distance, they saw pearls falling from the skies. They both ran to the location, and one of them doubtfully kept off from gathering the pearls. The other, with conviction, took out a bag, filled it with beautiful pearls, and joyfully went home. My friend, that is exactly what happens when we connect to Jesus. We don't have to have all the answers. We don't have to know all the ways or the hows. We simply in faith need to connect to him and let the joy of the Lord be our strength. Now that Jesus had risen from the dead, the future held something special for Mary Magdalene and the disciples. In joy, Mary Magdalene left the tomb site and undertook the mission of telling the disciples of the risen Savior. Indeed, that message has caused the overflowing of all the hearts of the faithful living and serving Christians throughout the ages. The simple yet profound good news message that up from the grave he arose has brought hope to every heart. For it embodies victory over life. It embodies good. It embodies victory of life over death and good over evil. It provides us with an opportunity to repent, to experience forgiveness, and to be reconciled to God. We can identify with Alfred Oakley in the hymn 123 in Voices in Praise. I serve a risen Savior. He is in the world today. I know that he is living whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he is always near. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and he talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives. He lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. However, my beloved in Christ, even as we rejoice today, there are many persons living all around us who need to receive the good news of the resurrected Jesus and be able to connect to him. We must hastily tell them of the redemption won and the forgiveness of sins gained. We must tell them that in Christ all things are made new and transformation from sinners to saints can take place. Being connected to Jesus enables us to faithfully serve him. And we have examples of that all through history, right up to our day in our lives. The Apostle Paul moved from a state of despair in the blindness and loneliness to be able to enter into a joyful relationship in Jesus and utter some amazing words of testimony. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 21, For to me living is Christ, and dying is gain. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10, 
I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. This glorious Easter morning, you and I join millions of Christians across our world in hailing the risen Lord Jesus Christ. He brings us a new and special future as he moves us from a time of despair and he gives us joy, joy deep down in our hearts. If you have already know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I encourage you to continue living for him and let nothing or no one ever stop you. If you have not yet, though, accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, this is your opportunity to say, I am coming, Lord. Coming now to thee. Wash me, cleanse me by the blood that flowed on Calvary. I want to encourage you then to open your hearts and accept Jesus Christ by faith, even now as he convicts you of your sin. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word and for your ministering upon each one of us. And God, we thank you for those of us who already know Jesus Christ. We pray, God, that you will strengthen us in our faith so that we will keep on being faithful in serving the Lord Jesus. Father, we think of those who even now are responding to Jesus. We pray, God, that you will wash away their sins as they confess their sins to you. We pray in the name of Jesus that he will come into their house and take up a place of dominance and residence. Be known to them, Lord, as a Savior and King. I pray, God, that as they give their hearts totally to Jesus, that you will surround them with your love and your power and your grace so that they can live faithfully for him. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. As we continue this act of worship, Reverend Eve Lord will lead us in the prayers of intercession. What a heart-stirring sermon by our superintendent minister, Reverend Philbert Delaney. Let us at this time intercede before God with our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Father God, indeed, we uphold the privilege that you have given to us, that we can bring everything to you in prayer. We lift up before you at this time the world, the nation, the islands. We bring Tobago, Trinidad, and Tobago to you, O oh God. Lord, that pandemic is affecting every one of us. Lord, we now understand what Wesley said when he said, the world is my parish. And dear God, as we come today, we ask you to look down mercifully upon those who are called to lead, those who are making the rules, dear God, for us at this time. We ask you, dear God, to comfort them because they too will have their families and different issues that they are dealing with personally. We ask you, dear God, to strengthen them. We ask you, dear God, to look on down upon them with your favor and grant them the direction, the wisdom, and the knowledge that is necessary at this time. Even as we remember those of our first responders, Lord, we cannot cry out to you enough for them. These are the persons who are risking their lives to save others, O oh God. Be merciful. Cover them. Some dear God cannot even return to their homes to reunite with their families, O oh God. But we ask you, dear God, that they find a family and comfort and peace in you. Today, dear God, so many are sad, 
So many are sad because of the effects of this virus, oh God. Those some are mourning for loved ones. But we know, dear God, that you are still God. You are the God that will be with us as we ride out our storms. We ask you, dear God, to be with them at this time. Lord, I lift up ministers and pastors and leaders in churches before you. Yes, Lord, we cannot get into the place of worship. But we know, dear God, that altars have been created in our homes. So we ask you, dear God, that indeed that contact with those who are responsible for our pastoral care will always be one that is available to us. Father God, today, we ask you to continue to be with families. May it be a time when families find time to play together, to pray together, to discuss their God, and to know more about you, to get closer to you, dear God. Father, Lord, we just want to give you thanks for all that you have done. And as we lift up our prayers to you today, O oh God, we know that you are promise-keeping God and your blessings will come down upon us. Continue to bless us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We say the Lord's Prayer together. Our oh, Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, we are going to observe the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. It is found on page 76 in your prayer books. If you are offering your gift upon the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has a grievance against you, leave your gift before the altar and go your way. First, be reconciled with your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I ask you at this time to share the peace among your relatives in the home. So the hymn as we continue to prepare for the sacrament is a hymn that is numbered 490.
God be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them up, up unto, unto the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right and, and fitting so to do. It is a good and pleasant thing, joyful and solitary, always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise. Lord God, ever living, ever blessed, almighty, or loving, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, you created all things and made us in your image. And when we had fallen into sin, you gave him to be our Savior. He shared our human nature and lived a fully human life. He suffered rejection and condemnation and died on the cross. You raised him up from the dead, and you exalted him to the glory of your right hand, where he reigns forever as priest and king and makes intercession for us. In weakness of his glory and honor, you poured out the Holy Spirit, building up many people into one body, making us living members of your holy church, and enabling us to stand before you and to sing your praises and celebrate your mighty acts. But today, especially, we praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his resurrection has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we join in the hymn of everlasting praise. Holy, 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 holy. Lord God, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe. And blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread in his holy hands, looking up to heaven, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Therefore, Father, in obedience to his command, we do this in remembrance of him. Praying that you'll accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we who receive your gifts of bread and wine may share in the body and blood of Christ and become united with him. And as we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice, we pray that you'll bring us with your whole creation to your heavenly kingdom. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. To, to whom, whom with you, you O Father, Father, in the unity of, of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be all, all honor, honor and glory from all who dwell on earth and in heaven, heaven throughout the ages, ages of ages. Amen. The bread which we break is in a sharing in the body of Christ. Amen. The cup of blessing which we bless is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. Though, Though we are, are many, we are, we are one, one body. body. Because, because we, we share, share the one loaf and, and partake of the same drink. Let us spend a moment in silence. We join together in this corporate prayer. Lord, we come to your table, trusting in your mercy and not in any goodness of our own. We are not worthy to gather the crumbs under your table. But it's your nature always to have mercy, and on that we depend. So feed us with the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, that we may forever live in him and he in us. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you, keep you in eternal life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you 
and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. You can now partake of the bread, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, keep you in eternal life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you, and be thankful. You can now partake of the wine. And we all join in a post-communal prayer together. We thank, thank you, you Lord, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united, united us with Christ, Christ and, and given us a foretaste of the, the heavenly, heavenly banquet prepared for all mankind. Amen. Amen. Before we have the closing hymn and benediction, we are going to have the community notice. As we look forward to the week ahead and be mindful and obedient regarding the enforced governmental restrictions, let us give some attention to our community notices from Reverend Philbert Delaney. All 10 Methodist chapels will remain closed with regular church activities being suspended. During this period, if you have a need, please don't hesitate to contact one of your congregational leaders or any of the four ministers as we strive to continue pastoral care to our members. We encourage daily family altar worship at a convenient hour for your household. You may use the liturgy from our Methodist prayer book, page 239 for Monday through to Friday and page 240 for Saturday. Keep in touch electronically and offer encouragement and any necessary assistance, particularly to the elderly and children. Members and friends of Methodism are encouraged to continue financially supporting the work of God. As such, Tithes and offerings can be brought in when in-person corporate services are resumed. We appeal to you and your household to please strictly maintain all of the health, safety and sanitizing guidelines as indicated by the government's notices. Please make note of our ministerial outreach via electronic media. Sundays at 6 a.m. on Radio Tambrin, a 30 minutes worship service. Sundays at 11 a.m. on Tobago Channel 5, a one-hour worship service. You can also view via Channel 5's live stream on Facebook and the MCCA South Caribbean's YouTube channel. Every day at 6 p.m. on Radio Tambrin, an audio presentation, two minutes in duration, called The Methodist Voice. Thursdays at 5.45 a.m. on Radio Tambrin, an audio presentation, 15 minutes in duration. We sing... 118 God sent his son God sent his son They called him Jesus He came to love Heal and forgive He lived and died To burn
Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit continue to be with all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you to each and every one of you for joining us for today's service. We pray that you were indeed blessed and your hearts lightened by this week's resurrection service. You are invited to join us next Sunday as we continue to place God at the forefront of our daily journeys. Be reminded that God's grace offers us fresh opportunities. Trust in God.